on World News Tonight. Radiation concerns. Conflict rages on in Ukraine with growing radiation concerns due to new rocket attacks. Tonight, we provide the latest. Climate concerns. Increasingly volatile situations have arisen in climate change realm as concerns arise for the safety of Americans. A pop star's demise. Greece musical star bids farewell to the world at 73 years of age. A heartwarming anniversary. The 77th remembrance of one of the most heinous crimes committed within the Second World War. This is Other Than Anna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. And tonight we start from the conflict in Ukraine. While the radiation levels are reportedly within normal range from the rocket attack in the Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the attack urged the UN Secretary General to call for an access to the facility. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called on Monday for international inspectors to be given access to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant after Ukraine and Russia traded accusations over the shelling of Europe's largest atomic plant at the weekend. Speaking at a conference in Japan after attending the 77th anniversary of Hiroshima, Guterres called the attack suicidal. Any attack to a nuclear plant is a suicidal thing, and I hope that uh, those attacks uh, will end. And at the same time, I hope that uh, the IAEA will be able uh, to uh, have access uh, to the plant and uh, to exercise uh, its mandate competencies. Guterres also called on the international community to commit to not using nuclear arsenals. I believe uh, this is the moment when the risk of a nuclear confrontation is back, something that we have forgotten for decades. This is the moment, as I said, to ask the nuclear armed countries to commit to the principle of non-first use and to commit to not use and not threaten, as I mentioned, non-nuclear armed countries with full transparency in relation to their arsenals. Russian forces captured the Ukrainian nuclear plant in March. Ukraine accused Russia of being responsible for the shelling on Saturday after three radiation sensors were damaged. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Sunday that Russia was waging nuclear terror that warranted more sanctions over Moscow's nuclear sector. The region's Russian-installed authority said Ukrainian forces hit the site with a multiple rocket launcher, damaging administrative buildings and an area near a storage facility. Armed conflict at the Soviet-era Zaporizhia site has alarmed the world. Tensions grow between China and Taiwan with the most recent visit from a U.S. official. Tonight, President Biden expresses his concerns. China's announcement of new military drills around Taiwan elicited some concern from U.S. President Joe Biden. I'm not worried, but I'm concerned that they're moving as much as they are. But I don't think they're going to do anything more. China's announcement on Monday came a day after a scheduled end to its military exercises in protest to U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's recent visit to Taiwan. China said the additional drills would focus on anti-submarine and sea assault operations, confirming the fears of some security analysts and diplomats that Beijing would keep pressure on Taiwan's defenses. Taiwan's foreign ministry condemned the move, saying China, which claims the self-governed island as its own, was deliberately creating crises, a sentiment echoed by a top Pentagon official Monday. The crisis, uh, you know, across the strait uh, is uh, essentially a manufactured one uh, by Beijing. U.S. Undersecretary of Defense for Policy Colin Call said the U.S. still believed it was unlikely China would try to retake Taiwan militarily in the next few years, despite its actions in the past week, and described China as trying to coerce Taiwan and the international community. And all I'll say is um, we're not going to take the bait and it's not going to work. Call said the U.S. military would continue to carry out passages through the Taiwan Strait in the coming weeks. Pelosi's visit infuriated China, which responded with test launches of ballistic missiles over Taipei for the first time. The duration and precise location of its latest drills is not yet known. 
Scientists say climate change is increasing the likelihood of lightning strikes across the United States after lightning struck at a square near the White House, leaving three people dead and one more other in critical condition. Is climate change increasing the likelihood of lightning strikes? Scientists say it is, after lightning struck near the White House, leaving three people dead and one other in critical condition. And we are praying for those still fighting for their lives. Let's take a look at why. The hot, humid conditions in Washington, D.C. on August 4th were primed for electricity. Air temperatures topped out at 94 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 5 degrees Fahrenheit higher than the 30-year normal maximum temperature for August 4th, according to the National Weather Service. More heat draws in more moisture into the atmosphere, while also encouraging rapid updraft two key factors for charged particles, which leads to lightning. A 2014 study released in the journal Science warned that the number of lightning strikes could increase by 50% in this century in the United States. It says that 1.8 degree Fahrenheit of warming translates into a 12% rise in the number of lightning strikes. Fast warming Alaska has seen a 17% rise in lightning activity since the cooler 1980s. And in typically dry California, some 14,000 lightning strikes hit during August 2020, sparking some of the state's biggest wildfires on record. Beyond the United States, there is evidence that lightning strikes are also shooting up in India and Brazil. Just one day after the White House incident, a lightning strike ignited an oil storage tank at the Matanzas Supertanker port in Cuba, killing at least one person and injuring more than a hundred. Experts say that even as lightning strikes increase, being hit by one is still extremely rare in the US. The Center for Disease Control says roughly 40 million lightning bolts touch down in the country every year with the odds of being struck less than one in a million. Among those who are hit, about 90% survive the ordeal, the CDC says. The country counted 444 deaths from lightning strikes from 2006 through 2021. Now, climate change is causing record-setting weather events this summer. The heaviest rainfalls are becoming even heavier, causing streets to become swamped. Death Valley National Park and Sioux, South Dakota are just two examples of areas being impacted by the increased rain. Meanwhile, the storms are also wreaking havoc in the already stressed airline industry. Late summer is traditionally flash flood season, but 2022's events are increasingly record setters. Climate change is making it easier for the heaviest rains to, to become even heavier. And this summer is a good example of that trend, which has been playing out over decades. More rain in a shorter time. Parts of Denver got more than two inches Sunday, much of it coming in just an hour. Swamping streets, firefighters rescuing 29 people from their vehicles, including these children. This is what happens when the hottest place on earth suddenly becomes one of the wettest. Death Valley National Park still cleaning up after Friday's devastating flood. Nearly an inch and a half of rain fell in the California desert, the most ever in a single August day. The park is closed. Feet of mud and rocks in many areas across park roads. Other areas have stretches of the road that are completely gone and will need to be rebuilt. In South Dakota, Sioux Falls recorded its wettest day ever, getting more than five inches on Sunday. The warmer the air, the more moisture it can hold. 90% of 150 locations surveyed by Climate Central now get more average rainfall an hour compared to 1970. Rainfall intensity increasing 13%. The storm's wreaking havoc with an already stressed airline system. Today, cancellations more than 600, delays over 4,000. They just kept saying weather, 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 weather. As America copes with a summer of uncertain skies. France also braced for a fourth heat wave this summer as its worst drought on record left parched villages without safe drinking water and farmers warned of looming milk shortage in the winter. In France, an historic drought is taking a toll. Authorities have banned the irrigation of some crops in over half of the country's departments to conserve water. In Charente-Maritime, in the southwest, 
desperate times call for desperate measures. Many farmers are flouting the rules and watering their crops in spite of restrictions. We are not respecting the rules because we have to support our family. We have expenses to pay, which have increased with the economic situation in Ukraine. This farmer's equipment was confiscated by authorities after he continued irrigating his produce illegally for three months. The association France Nature Environnement says the agricultural industry needs to adapt. It's obviously not nice to see crops drying up, but alerts were being sent out as early as February, warning that the season would be difficult. Farmers should have avoided planting crops that would require a lot of water in the summer. In the city of Colmar in eastern France, it's flowers that's causing worry. The city's colourful bouquets haven't been watered for days now because of a ban. The mayor has asked for an exemption. We want to maintain the beauty of our town and continue to attract tourists. Others argue that there shouldn't be double standards. Residents have also put a lot of work into their gardens. What will they think? Why should this city be exempt from the rules and not the residents? The nation's weather agency says this drought is the worst since records began in 1958. And there is expected to be no respite until at least mid-August. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, at least 44 people, including 15 children, were killed in 56 hours of violence that began when Israeli airstrikes targeted a senior Islamic jihadi com commander. Israel said that its actions was preemptive strike against an attack planned by the Iranian-backed group. Fuel supplies crossing to the Gaza Strip following the border reopening, bringing the area's only power station back online. The streets are bustling with shoppers, as an Egyptian-brokered ceasefire between Israel and Islamic Jihad hold. In an area flattened by Israeli airstrikes, surviving families are picking up the pieces after three days of violence. In three years, we've suffered three wars. Every time they bombed our homes from all sides, from the east, from the west and from the north. Gaza authorities say more than 40 Palestinians, including 15 children, were killed in the worst flare-up since last year's 11-day war. Hundreds were injured. There was no fatality on the Israeli side. In the southern Israeli coastal town of Ashkelon, a frequent target for Palestinian militants' rocket attacks, security restrictions have been lifted. The ceasefire offering a respite, but not much hope for lasting peace. I think the res res resolution of this operation is uh, the same like uh, every, every, uh, every time. It's uh, go back to the start point. The truce came with both sides boasting of their successes. While the Israeli army claimed to have killed the entire senior leadership of Islamic Jihad's military wing, the Iran-backed militant group said it remained strong, despite losing two of its leaders. Now, Kenyans started voting in the presidential and parliamentary elections, but many citizens, desperate for relief from spiking food prices and deep-rooted corruption, have little confidence the next government will deliver change. Outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta is stepping down after reaching the end of his two-term limit. The main candidates vying to replace him are establishing Kenyan politicians. Odinga is a veteran opposition leader who is this time round won Kenyatta's endorsement. William Bruto has been Kenyatta's deputy for the past nine years, though the two men have fallen out. Odinga, who has competed successfully in four previous elections, have promised to tackle corruption and make peace with opponents after the election. The 2007 and 2017 polls were marred by violence after disputes over alleged rigging. To avoid a runoff, a presidential candidate needs more than 50% of votes and at least 25% of the votes cast in half of Kenya's 47 countries. Former U.S. President Donald Trump said FBI agents raided his Mar-a-Lago estate and broke into his safe in what his son acknowledged as part of an investigation into Trump's removal of official presidential records from the White House to his Florida resort. After former President Donald Trump said FBI agents raided his Mar-a-Lago residence and broke into his safe on Monday, 
a small group of his supporters gathered outside his Florida home. The alleged raid comes while the U.S. Justice Department investigates official presidential records that Trump may have brought with him from the White House to Palm Beach. The New York Times and CNN also reported on the raid and said it was tied to classified documents citing unnamed sources. The Justice Department declined to comment. The FBI's headquarters in Washington and its field office in Miami both also declined to comment. CNN reported that the FBI had executed a search warrant to enter the premises. It added that Trump, who has made the Palm Beach Club his home since leaving the White House in 2021, was not there at the time. Trump made no mention of why the raid took place. Earlier this year, the National Archives and Records Administration notified Congress it had recovered about 15 boxes of White House documents from Trump's Florida home, some of which contained classified materials. At the time, the House of Representatives Oversight Committee announced it was expanding an investigation into Trump and asked the archives to turn over additional information. Trump previously confirmed that he had agreed to return certain records to the archives, calling it, quote, an ordinary and routine process. Monday's alleged raid would only add to Trump's current legal woes, including a probe investigating his part in the January 6, 2021 storming of the Capitol, as well as allegations of illegal dealings connected to the 2020 presidential elections. Singer and actress Olivia Newton-John, who soared to the top of the world's pop music charts in 1970s and the 1980s with tunes such as I Honestly Love You and Physical, and starred in the hit movie musical Grease, died yesterday at the age of 73 at her home in Southern California. A true global superstar, Olivia Newton-John has died at the age of 73. Known best for her role as Sandy in the 1978 musical Grease, Co-star John Travolta was one of the first to pay tribute to the late star. My dearest Olivia, you made all of our lives so much better. Your impact was incredible. I love you so much. We will see you down the road and we will all be together again. Yours from the moment I saw you and forever. Your Danny, your John. Fans were quick to pay their respects. An impromptu vigil being set up at Newton John Star on the Walk of Fame in LA. For me, it's just, it, it, it hits hard, you know, when your idols die, um, it's just like even a piece of your family too, because you grew up with them. She's just a beautiful lady and, and uh, a great vocalist, a great actress. We're, we're really gonna miss her. Born in England, but growing up in Australia, Newton John went on to have a successful musical career after her star turn in Greece. Winning multiple Grammys, she topped the charts with songs such as Physical and Xanadu, selling over 100 million records along the way. The star fought with cancer for the last 30 years of her life, being diagnosed with breast cancer on three separate occasions. She devoted much of her time in later years to charity, as well as dedicating a number of albums and concerts to raise funds for research, as well as early detection of the disease. Olivia Newton-John leaves behind a legacy that stretches well beyond her acting and musical stardom. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news let's take you around the world in a minute. Vidya warned its second quarter revenue would drop by 19% from the prior quarter, sending the chip designer's shares down. Shares of Nvidia Corp tumbled more than 6% in yesterday's trading after the semiconductor company disclosed that it expects to fall well short of revenue expectations for its latest quarter largely due to gaming weakness. Large sections of the 650km River Po have dried up in Italy's worst drought for 70 years. Unusually hot weather and low rainfall levels have compounded northern Italy's water shortages and heightened fears about the effects of climate change. At least seven people have died in South Korea after record overnight rainfall hammered the capital Seoul, turning streets into rivers, submerging vehicles and inundating metro stations. Hyundai Motor Group's total domestic sales of eco-friendly cars has now crossed over a million. The South Korean auto giant said yesterday that it sold more than 29,000 eco-friendly vehicles in July, bringing total domestic sales to date to just over 1 million. 
China succeeded in using a CEIES-1 carrier rocket to send three satellites into space today. The rocket blasted off at the Jiaquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The three satellites are provided commercial remote sensing services and verify a multi-mode remote sensing detection technology on a micro-polarization camera. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And finally, we take a look at the heartwarming visuals of the 77th anniversary of the Nagasaki bombings in Japan in World War II. The unfortunate incident had it certainly took over 75,000 lives. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and have a good night.